Hey everybody, we're back here at Thermal Take Live for CS 2018, and I am your host, Mike Fearheller, aka Thermal Mike, and I have a special guest here to kick off CES 2018, Mr. Kenny Lin, CEO of Thermal Take. Kenny, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as everyone. always. Yeah, hello everyone. I'm Kenny. Welcome to join our CES live streaming show. Welcome. All right, all right. So hey, we're just gonna get started here. We got some uh, stuff to kind of talk about, yep. some new things that we got going. And you know, just uh, for you guys watching at home, we definitely appreciate you guys jumping on the live stream. So if there's any uh, questions you guys may have, and or you know, if you can't hear me or any audio stuff, just let us know and drop it in the chat. We'd really appreciate it so we can make sure everybody can clearly hear what we got to say. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Mm -hmm. Man, let's get, we got a lot of stuff to show. Right. A lot of great stuff to show you guys this year. So I wanna first start off with um, our celebration of our 20 years here with Thermal Take. And to celebrate that, Thermal Take's back here with CES 2018. And this week we have lots of special products, lots of great stuff to show you guys. But first, I wanna start here with the new Level 20 Level chassis. 20. Okay. So uh, the Level 20 chassis has been released at CES 2018 to celebrate the Thermal Tech's upcoming 20 years anniversary. And the new uh, Level 20 is a major design upgrade from the Level 10 chassis, which has been released 10 years ago. And the Level 20 retains the simple classics and the actual designs of the previous chassis, but it's fully constructed with the premium quality. Aluminum made with a unique three chamber design and the four millimeter thick tempered glass panels. In terms of the technology, the Level 20 comes with the Rim Plus fan, RGB software, and the Rim fan pre-builds. And the Thermal has added the latest artificial intelligence, the AI voice command technology into it. You can use the AI voice command, all the fan color, all the fan speed. Also, the, the two Lumi Plus LED strips and other RGB liquid cooling components. So in the conclusions, the Level 20 chassis symbolized the thermal takes experience and the craftsmanship as a leading case design and produced for the past 20 years. Wow, I mean, that's, that, that's just an amazing amount of stuff for an amazing case to yeah. celebrate our 20th anniversary with thermal take. Right. And I mean, you know, it's just been great to be a part of thermal take here for these few years that I've been here, Kenny. And, uh, I, I just I look forward to the case and to see what uh, the modders are going to do. Right. I mean, for something this premium to come out and then to be able to put this type of a premium chassis in the hands of some of the world famous modders. I mean, I'm just really excited to see you know what people come up with the designs and the concepts and everything. So that's the level 20 chassis, and we'll be covering that here later today for day one of our live stream here at CES. Now jumping forward here, so Thermaltake has continued the modding spirit. Right. We've had, I mean, we've been doing the case mod invitational for years now, and we're currently underway with our MFC right. season two. I mean, we got with 12 guys doing some crazy mods with our core P90 chassis. Now with 10 champions from the previous case mods, 10, not 12, 10. 10. Yeah. How do you feel, Kenny? This is going to impact. How does this impacting the, the the modding community? The modding community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you what's your, what's your thoughts? Okay. I think for the past few years, this is around the 50 models across the Gobies to participate in the thermal Ted case model invitational. And the many models has found the fan and the success through the competitions. The modding community has developed into a growing industry, and the thermal Ted has really contributed to this. First of all, the modding is not recognized as a visible profession. Secondly, thermal Ted has been satisfying the models with more innovative products designed for their needs. Thirdly, Thermaltech has encouraged the next generation to not just be a gamer, but also become a model. And to separate these three years milestones, we are holding the Thermaltech case modding fighting championship, NFC season two. The top 10 models that we have worked with in the past three years has been invited to compete for the titles of the best models. 
Wow. I mean, I mean, that's, you know, it's pretty yeah. crazy. I mean, to be the best modder, I mean, yeah. not just to win the first competition, right. but then to win that competition and go on to like a championship when you're play, going up against, I mean, these are some great guys. I mean, I've, I've met all of these guys for the most part. I mean, they're, they're a great bunch of guys and very talented guys too. So, I mean, it's going to be a tough competition and we're definitely looking forward to see the results here. Um, I believe it's in February or definitely uh, within the yeah, next no, month. Wait. End of February, yeah. we'll have the results. So you guys right. stay tuned. You know, check our forums for the voting. Um, you guys can kind of see what the progress is going on with the builds is what everybody's got going on. And, I mean, it's just exciting, you guys. And definitely help uh, jump in and support your favorite modder, too, because they're in the runnings just themselves. They're working hard because they want to have the title of being number yeah. one. The best modder. I mean, that's a big thing to say, man. That is definitely a big thing to say. So, all right. So kicking off another year here, yes. CES 2018. Yes. We're here at the Venetian Hotel, beautiful hotel. Beautiful. We got this nice big ballroom, lots of products to show for. I am looking forward to showcasing a lot of our new chassis, cooling, power, and our esports peripherals to come. We got a lot of new things to come out. We got some fresh gear for everybody to check out. And so, you know, Kenny, I want to ask you. So with all this new stuff yeah. we got coming out, what, what, what's your idea, you know, like focus products for 2018? What can people like look forward to uh, from Thermaltake here in 2018? Okay. okay. So there's so many the new products we're coming out this year at CES. So first that we already talked about the label 20. It is represent the company for the 20 years. We're separating for 20 years anniversary. So also we have the new open frame design called P90. It's an upgrade design from the Core P5. So you can see the actual product at our booth. And also we have a super full tower, Build 91, with the four tempered glass design. It is the, the max the design case. You can install as much as many water cooling solution into this case. And also uh, we have the, the latest the Pacific the liquid cooling, the DIY kit, uh, Pacific M360. Uh, we have a 240 and a 280 and a 360, four item, which um, allow you to install a any hard tube solution by using the list the DIY kits. Also, the latest one we have a TT Synchronize controller. Uh, for our software, we have the TT Synchronize controller designed for synchronize all the thermal take the ring plus RGB products, and it also can work with the selected motherboard like ASUS Gigabyte and the MSI motherboards. And for the power supply, we have the iRGB plus plenty names, and this power supply uh, we have a several and you know, we introduced the RGB power supply uh, last year. So the Prentinen iRGB series is upgrade design with the TT Premium Edition from the 850 watt, 1050 watt, and the 1200 watt. Also, you can see our latest software, uh, the new DPSG uh, app 3.0, and the Smart Power Management Cloud 1.0, and also the DPSG Mobile app 1.0. And the latest, the, the, the gaming product, we have a TT Premium X1 gaming keyboard. Uh, the focus product for TD Sport. It is a focus product and TD Premium Edition S1 RGB key mechanical gaming keyboard with a Cherry MX sliver, speed, and the blue switch. The X1 RGB is a result of the crossover cooperation between the Thermotech and the TD Sport gaming brand. And it, it is come with the AI technology voice control function. It also come with the TD RGB Synchronize compatible. Uh, you can use this keyboard to control all the liquid cooling solution, uh, lighting effect. And also we have the latest technology. It is called a virtual game controller function uh, by, the, by using the mobile app. So you can control this keyboard, use the mobile app to play the, like a base keyboard game, football game. So there are many more amazing products I have yet introduced today. So I would like to welcome all our visitors to join us at the Thermotech Shonen in CS 2018. We are located at the Venetian Hotel, Venice 240T suit from the January 9 to 12. And we look forward to see you in here. Right on. Awesome. Thank awesome. you. So that's it, guys. You guys have heard the quick pick from Kenny here on some of the new products that we're going to be showing. We're going to dive in and go in depth with those products here throughout the week. And we're just getting started here for CES 2018. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a quick little break, um, get set up, and then we're going to start day one here of CES 2018, focusing on our chassis line. So if you guys want to just hang tight or come back, we'll be live back here for day one in about 15 to 20 minutes. So thank you guys so much for watching. And Kenny, 
It's always a yeah, pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming out. Have a great day. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Take care. Hey everybody, welcome to a day one here at the beautiful Venetian Hotel here in Las Vegas for CS 2018 with Thermaltake. And of course with this we're going to start with the biggest and the baddest with our new chassis lines. And of course with this celebrating our upcoming 20th anniversary here with Thermaltake, the new level 20 chassis. Now this case right here offers a lot of different things. We've designed this case to offer three separate chambers, as you can see. We did show the early concept design of this at Computex last year, and we've made some additional adjustments from the feedback that we've received. We've changed the color a little bit on it to give it more of like a space gray type of look. And of course, you got that same nice tempered glass panels that all swing open to be able to access all of the compartments that are available here on the chassis very quick and very easily. Now, these chassis panels the other thing that I like about these is these all have pass-through ports. So see, right here? Hi, everybody. Hi. There's lots of room and lots of fitment. I can even run my channeling for my tubing through the bottom portion of the case as well, just the same. And with this, this is our Level 20 chassis, celebrating 20 years, because we want to make sure this is a pristine, premium chassis for our users. And with that, we've added plenty of fitment for cooling, storage, and more. As you can see in here, we have uh, vertical GPU mounting. We have our power supply actually mounted on the top. So it's kind of like a throwback in a way, but then at the same time, it is convenient to give you the power supply spacing up here. There's plenty of room for cable management. We also have proper spacing to be able to run the cooling tubes through the top part, the bottom part, and in the side. So being able to create what you want to do with your designs with your radiator and reservoir mounting in the front chamber, and then being able to have that pass through into the main chamber where you'd keep your components, and then having your power and cable management here up at the top. So if you guys uh, have any particular questions about the Level 20, um, you know, definitely let me know if you guys can hear me okay and all that fun stuff. Uh, I'm watching the chat so that way I can answer anything that you guys might have, but man, I'm really excited about this. And this is a big boy. I mean, you look at this, I mean, height-wise, I mean, this is a tall case. Being able to support some heavy-duty components in with it, it's got a nice, clean, sleek front end to it. And then as I just kind of just close these doors here, just kind of show you guys a couple of things. Now, with this, we have an I.O. panel. Now, we've added four USB 3.0 ports here, but we've also integrated a Type-C connector as well. So this is one of our first new chassis that's going to be supporting a Type-C out I.O. header port on the front. Got your nice buttons, uh, digital audio, and all that fun stuff. And then coming over here, if I just kind of just turn this a little bit just to kind of show you guys, look at the width of the back of this case. This case has plenty of room through the backside, and especially with the back chamber here for your cable management in the back, I mean, it goes a long way, especially if you want to fill the chassis with your components, deal with your cable management, controllers, whatever. You have proper fitment options here in the back of the chassis as well. You get an 8 plus 2, giving you the vertical GPU mounting, so that way you can mount your GPU vertically, which is a staple here at Thermaltake, and then being able to integrate your fans and having all of your separate compartments here on the chassis as well. Now I just move this guy back. Now this is the level 20 titanium chassis. Uh, and with it, I mean, you know, let's see, we got anything. Show the vertical bracket. Okay, so like if you want to see here, we want to come in here on this. So we've designed this bracket a little bit different than what you'd normally see. Great question and thanks for pointing that out. So with this, you have your two uh, expansion slots right here, but there's also a retention plate on the bottom to keep the graphic card solid. I mean, this is a solid mounting for the graphics card. You know, you don't have to deal with the GPU sag of having your graphics card mounted traditionally, but you do have the option for it. And then the other great thing with this too is that with the, with the riser cable, you'll be able to mount your graphics card and then have the extra slots for sound cards or other peripheral devices that you can throw in the back. And then it doesn't clutter up the system too much, giving you that clean look for the GPU, especially with this. I mean, this is neat too, because this is one of the Poseidon cards, so this can actually do either or. And of course, we definitely went liquid cooling here at thermal take. So this right here, I mean, I just like how this mounts. I like the additional fan housing. There's a housing that's built in right here that's also removable. A lot of this stuff that's all in here is modular, guys. So you can take out certain things, add certain things. There's plenty of filters in here for those guys that don't want any dust in their system. So we have filters in the bottom. There's even a double filter pass-through between the two chambers that are here as well. You got proper premium grommets on the top for proper pass-through. and. So if you can bring, bring the camera in here a little bit more, I want to show. So with this door panel, 
you guys can see, see my, my finger right here, you can see how this goes through both of the panels. And you don't just have one, but you have two. So that way I can run both of my tubing loops through the back or through the front for my in and outs or to get my out and my return for my coolant. And I really like how this integrates through the separate chamber because it gives you that nice unique look. If you have your coolant tubes going through here, you can even see the coolant right here in the break between the system chambers as well. Really cool design and of course, you know with this, it's a premium chassis from Thermaltech. It's our 20 years folks. We're definitely here to celebrate and we want to make sure we bring a nice premium product to you as well. So this is the level 20 from Thermaltech take. This product should be available in the U.S. around uh, second quarter here of this year, so keep an eye out for that, so that way you can get some stuff. And as Adam says here, let's mod. I wish I could get my hands on one of these things to know, but I know it's probably from our professional modders, they might be able to get it in there first, but definitely a chassis of my choice that I'd love to do some liquid cooling in and just get some, just a great look with this. So the level 20 here, more information on our website and more stuff to come as we go throughout with the week of CES 2018. Now moving forward here. Now we've done this case already in a way. We've shown the core P90, but we haven't shown the core P90 titanium edition. So this is the titanium edition of the core P90 coming in the silver color as you can see and we've even mixed up a nice custom gray coolant color using our opaque to kind of make it match and, and get everything up. So with this car, so with this you get your vertical GPU mounted very similar in the same with our core P series cases that you'd see. You get the option to be able to have the vertical mount on the power supply and then radiator space. So this will support up to either a 480 or 420 meaning either a 4120 or a 3140 radiator configuration. Plenty of room for fans to even do a push-pull configuration. And one of the things I like about this too is that for a lot of people that have you know been with the Core P series cases, um, this case particularly here also has some additional storage mounting on the side. So you get three SSD mounts on the side right here on top of the radiator. It's not an and or an or, it's both. So I think that's a nice little add-on that we've done. Proper pump mounting here so you can mount your pump and adjust it. And of course with this being a 90 degree bend, the cornerstone of your next gaming PC, it of course it has proper looping here so you can definitely put an AIO in here as well. So don't trip on that. You'll still be able to fit an AIO in here with this and then being able to do either vertical or traditional GPU or other component mounting in any combination is also an option with it too. So the core P90, this is the titanium edition. Five millimeter tempered glass, plenty of mounting and fitment. If you guys have any questions on that, let me know. But I'm definitely looking forward to this. And we have more titanium edition cases also in the works too that are gonna be coming out that I'll show you guys here in just a moment. Now with this too, I also wanna mention this follows the same suit as a core piece series, giving you that three-way placement option so you can lay the case down flat. It almost looks like a V8 motor when it's laid down flat. So I'm really excited to see what some modders are gonna be doing and what they can get out of it. You can mount it vertically and it even has the wall mount capability on the back as well. So I mean, for someone that wants to wall mount this, I would just highly recommend that you get the proper mounting bracket for it to support the weight of the chassis complete, not just thinking about the case weight itself. But other than that, it's, I mean, it's really nice. It's very unique, it's different. Being able to do something like this, I mean, I was really excited to be able to do these 90 degree bends to have them come up over and around and be able to get this. I've built a couple of these now. This was one of the beautiful cases that came from our headquarters office and they did a great job. So. Uh, the core P90 titanium edition, definitely more information down the road. Now, of course, with our core P series, you know, we've got more and more stuff going on. This is something that's uh, pretty familiar for most people, but definitely something to mention is our core P3 curve edition. So we've had the curve glass. We sold a, a few amounts of these as like an accessory item. But now we're going to be bringing the curved tempered glass to the chassis all in one box. So if you guys haven't gotten the Core P3 yet, and it's maybe something on your list and you want the curve, then you might want to wait for the Core P3 curved glass. We'll also be having the glass sold separately on our online stores like ttpremium.com, but then we'll also be having this with the case and everything. I think it's a great add-on for it. The glass can be mounted sideways as you see, or turn vertical so the glass goes over the top. So a lot of people that have gotten questions like, hey man, this is an open frame chassis, it's got dust and everything in there. Well, turning this up kind of covers that top part for a nice clean and easy wipe away uh, 
um, you know, and definitely saving you more time and less management stuff that you got to deal with with this. So this is the core P3 Curved TG edition, um, and definitely look forward to that. Now we got a lot of other stuff. We're going to be covering it here throughout the week. So I know you guys might be seeing some of the other stuff, and we'll be getting to that here. So just to kind of give you guys a little bit of an idea, like we you know what's going on. What's Thermal Take doing this week? So today's day one. Day one, we're going to be focusing on our chassis, and then going into tomorrow for day two, we're going to be talking about lots and lots of liquid cooling. So come join and dive in with me for all of that. Ring Plus fans, software, AI control, we've got lots of great things there. And then on Thursday, we're going to be covering our power components with our power supplies, and of course, our new keyboard from our eSports, from TT eSports, the TT Premium X1 keyboard. That's a really cool keyboard, and you guys are going to like the add-ons and the features that we did with that just the same. So moving over here, I got the, this is the, the View 71. Now this is the, the standard View 71 uh, that's been out. Uh, it, uh, you know, the, we're currently selling this product. I got a special one that I'm going to show you here in just a minute. But uh, just to cover, this is the black version of the core, or, or sorry, the View 71 chassis, full tower, and I mean, it's just gorgeous. Being able to fill all these components in here, having three radiator mountains with uh, the vertical radiator mounting here on the side, and then just being able to the components and all this tempered glass, and this gapping. This gapping is huge. A lot of the people that do their tempered glass, they have it right up against the panel, and it just you just don't get that airflow. You definitely sacrifice in the front, but not on the View. 71 from Thermaltake. So definitely take note of that with this gapping right here. I get great airflow with this and I just like the overall design. It's a very sturdy, strong case. Now moving back over to our core P series and then we can be in a little bit of a, oh, whoa. All these surprises here at CES 2018. Now we're going to be moving over here. So this is our core P5 titanium edition. Now this has some changes to it that's a little bit different than what you guys have, that have a core P5 already. So let's kind of give you like a little bit of a quick rundown. So with this one, it keeps the tradition like the core P7, giving you a full motherboard tray that's removable. So the tray on the motherboard is actually modular. So you can take this off, be able to mount all your components, you know, get yourself almost kind of like a wet bench kind of testing, get that all set up, then you can go ahead and mount this back on the case. This gives you vertical GPU mounting, so no sag there, great addition for the P5 series, and then of course you still have your vertical power supply mount, pump mount, and radiator design that you all know and hear from, you know, our core P5 series. But I also like it comes in this nice titanium gray color, and uh, this is another product that we have coming out. It'll also be coming with tempered glass. Now I know a lot of people have seen the Core P5 with the acrylic panels, but this edition is going to have the single tempered glass panel, and then of course we have a tempered glass kit that you can buy separately if you want to add the panel on the top and on the front, but you might not want to go with the titanium edition for that because it already comes with the big glass piece. And this 5 millimeter stick, folk, and this is real tempered glass, 100% tempered glass. Don't let other people fool you trying to tell you that it's tempered glass. So with that, we got this. I mean, you guys know about this for the most part. I just, I wanted to show it because I, I just, I got to get to the fun stuff. I can't wait. I can't wait. So we're going to come cruise over here a little bit. Here's another uh, core uh, P90 titanium edition, but we already kind of talked about it, so we're kind of jumping on it with that. But I, I, I want to move over here to one of my, one of my little, my, my specials here and everything like that. And that is going to be our View 37. So this here is the View 37. This is basically an upgraded version of what you would see with the View 27 that we released not so long ago. Nice fat wide body. It's got the same type of curved 90 degree glass here on the top. This is acrylic, it's not tempered glass, so that way we can keep the price point really reasonable for you guys. But what I enjoy about this case is it supports a dual 200 millimeter fan in the front. And I, I mean, this Ring 20 is just going to be amazing, but I mean, being able to put this in the case and have that fitment, and just, you know, so you guys just don't, you know, get freaked out or whatever, it also supports other fan sizes. So you'll be able to get the proper support for everything on the fans in the front if you want to run your radiator, if you want to run your fans and loop, and then it also adopts what the View 71 did with the sideways vertical radiator mounting. So you got that full front look here on this, and then you know what else we did? We put a, we put a filter on the back. We put this, so when mounting the radiator in the front on the sideways there, 
there's a full channel that's filtered for even more additional airflow on the back side of the case. So nice little add-ons, thinking about all the little ins and outs on this, so that way you can get it. And then, you know, of course, as you see this, this is some new modes, some new synchronization that we'll be showing uh, to basically, uh, you know, kind of go with what we were talking about in the first stream with our co-ops with uh, some motherboard companies. Um, Looking at this, you get USB 2.0, you get USB 3.0, you get this nice tempered or not temp, uh, acrylic panel that looks like it's tempered glass. I mean, I almost said it myself because uh, it, it does look and almost feel. It's a little bit thicker than the 27 from what I saw, and I just like the overall look of it. And then being able because you sacrifice the top, right? When you don't, when you have glass on the top, you don't have that mounting for the radiator, you don't have that mounting for the cooling. So adding in that vertical uh, side ra ra radiator mount really adds a lot to this case. So I can either put my radiator in the front, put fans in the front, mount my radiator on the side, kind of gives you a, a plus in both of, you know, you got both options here. And then there's still plenty of fitment. There's mounting holes on the bottom to mount your pump and reservoirs for screws. I mean, at the whole bottom of it's perforated here, so that way you can mount your pump in just about any configuration that you want. Vertical GPU. Now, with this one, with the vertical GPU, it does have more spacing on this. This is a two-slot card, and as you can see, I got about a slot and a half of extra space. So for those larger graphic cards that are coming out in the market, where, uh, you know, if you want to do it vertically, this case gives you that added space that you're going to need. So if you're going to not be water blocking it, of course, which you probably would want to in a case like this, but, you know, maybe you're on a budget or maybe it's something down the road and you just want to run the air cooler for a little bit, this is really nice, giving you almost a three-space gap here on this, so plenty of room to still keep the airflow with a fan card and then be able to fit in lots of liquid cooling in there as well. So, I mean, I really like this. It's a wide body chassis, so there's plenty of space here in the back for additional cable management and cable options on it too. So I can just put as many controllers, LED strips, RGB, everything all right here in the back and it makes it real convenient and easy. I also like a front mount button thing. You got your power button here and it's all in the front versus on the top. Some people don't like it on the top, some people don't like it on the front, but hey, you gotta pick or choose either way. But I just like how clean this is, giving you this nice clean front. This really changes the game for a lot of stuff with you do the fans. You also have plenty of ventilation down both sides here. So you guys, you know, wondering if you're any concerns with like airflow and stuff like that. It's still got it. And then I like the add-on again for the side mount here for the radiator mounting too. So definitely thank you guys for your feedback. Um, from our previous case line so we can make something even better for you guys. So this here is the View 37 from Thermaltake and it's one of my personal favorites here for CES. Now, we got some big guys to talk about. So that's the View 37, we've talked about the Core P5, we've talked about the P90, of course the Level 20 to celebrate our 20 year anniversary and everything. And I just wanna move over here, I, pardon me guys, thanks so much. So here's one of our big boys that we got. Let's just focus on just this for right now. Let's just get just this one in right now. I wanna save that one over there for just a second. So this is our View 91. So this is, at the moment, topping our View Series chassis line for the biggest case. And as you can see here with this, there is plenty of room to fit in what you wanna put in with this. Dual loop capabilities, being able to have vertical GPU mounting. So when you compare this to like the W100, for example, that we were running before, the W100 didn't offer the vertical GPU mounting at the time. There was also some brackets and some hard drive cages that were, I would not necessarily say limited, but it wasn't fully packed. Well, this case right here comes fully packed with storage. So if you're looking to be doing something, if you want to do a media center with this, or you just want to build a really crazy liquid cooling system, the View 91 might be the choice for you. This right here offers, you got five millimeter tempered glass panels on both sides and the front panel. This nice little suicide swing open door is just, I mean, since we've launched this, this has just always been one of my personal favorite features. And then the door comes right up and off making it very easy to access everything within the system and then just being able to just, I, I, I love this. This goes all the way back. But I mean, it's easier just to take it off, you know, when you're doing your building because you don't want to scratch it or have any issues with it. But again, it's tempered strong with five millimeter thick tempered glass. And uh, you can see you got dual, GP, uh, dual reservoirs in here, radiator mounting on the front. You got the side vertical radiator mounting as well as on the top. So plenty of spacing on this. This case supports four USB 3.0s and also includes one Type-C connector as well 
on the top I.O. panel. And we're also going to be looking to maybe throw in some accessory options with the case. Now with this too, if you're not wanting to go liquid cooling, something important to mention as well is that the hard drive cage that you've seen with the W100 that we did is now fully stacked, being able to support even more storage. And then with the back, we've added additional brackets back there to add even more fan cooling or more storage options, just the same. So you can pack this not just with cooling and components, but be able to store and save your data all in one big machine. Because of course, it's a big case, right? It should fit. So we've always thought at Thermaltake, in my opinion, when I look at cases, I look to see what they did on the outside. It's not necessarily all about what the outside is, but how the inside goes, how the configuration of the inside is of this case. And it's definitely different than anything that you're gonna see out there, being able to fit all this stuff, full perforated bottom. I mean, I really like the options to be able to do and secure my mounting and my pumps on there. So if you guys got any questions on that, uh, you know, definitely let me know. Um, for any new cube cases, I don't have anything here per se to show on the show floor, but we do have some other models and some other mid-range products that we're gonna be announcing later throughout the year. So stay tuned for that. And definitely thanks for the question. Um, and then I got another one here from Paul. You got the Versus C23, I'm reviewing it soon. Yes, Paul, we do have the, the C23, but we do have it in one of our other rooms for demos. We're gonna be talking about it, because it is a, a product that's currently already out in the market. But definitely look forward to uh, seeing your review there on the C23. It's a great case, and it's got some really cool features and options. Now moving over to probably one of my personal favorites. I think I'm gonna be doing an upgrade here soon after seeing this. This is the VIEW 71 Snow. Winter has come, folks. We have the VIEW 71 Snow here, and it's basically the same thing that you would see in the VIEW 71 Black that we've already released, but now it's nice and dipped in a nice white color. I think we might have gotten a hint from one of our famous modder buddies that did a custom mod on a VIEW 71, but me personally, I thought this was the perfect choice of case to go with a next snow edition, and I love it. I love the idea of being able to mix the black and the whites in here together, having the tempered glass panels on all sides, giving you the ability to mount a radiator in the front, vertical on the side, and on the top. So I mean, that really gives you a lot of options. All this perforation on the bottom that you'll see here on the bottom of the case for pump mounting, and then plenty of space. There's even a cool little drain port, if you guys haven't seen some of our other videos, where if you mount your radiator on the front, there's a little drain door that you can take out to put your drain plug go right down the bottom. It makes it real convenient to be able to just slide the case out like this, and then to be able to just drain it right here through the bottom of it with the optional panel that's removable. Now, of course, that more or less means if you run off of your pump and you do a drain port going down and you have a quick connect, or if you have your radiator mounted in the front, you can put that port straight down there. Makes it easy and convenient. So let's just take a look here and say, all right, so when are the RGB custom loops with fittings and stuff gonna be available in India? I'm not too sure, but I do have my representatives here that cover the regions for India, so I'll definitely ask them and we'll definitely see what we can do to get some updates going that way. So thank you so much for the questions. Is there a mesh dust protection on the top under the glass? Yes, there is. So with this right here, if I just, let me see. So I'll pop the top panel off, it's all one piece. So this is an all one piece panel. And as you can see here, there's a nice filter in here as well to be able to, and it's removable. So if you want an additional airflow, you can take it off. But just look at the spacing. Look at all this space that you have up here to mount everything. Even the IO panel is a separate module that's removable. Same with the front. It all comes off in one piece, not in pieces. And then I'll just drop this right back down here. And you know, I gotta tell you, it's a solid design. It's not something that's flimsy, folks. It's not gonna fall apart when you build in it. Uh, you know, I mean, I, that's what I really like about this. And the other thing, too, is that the glass panels are removable. So I can actually take the glass panels off of the case, uh, too, if I want to clean it or if I'm doing my modding, I put all my glass aside, um, you know, if I'm going to paint the case and do stuff like that. It really gives you lots of options. Plenty of dust filters, though. You got a filter on the bottom, filter in the front, filter on the top, all optional. I mean, we're thermal take, folks. We're all about thermal. I mean, almost every case just has tons and tons of filters, but of course it is optional for you guys. So I mean, you know, if you need it, you need it. If you don't, you don't. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, folks. So that's the VIEW 71 snow here. Winter has come, so stay tuned for this. VIEW 71, I'm really, really excited about that. 
Now then, of course, we have our other P5 titanium edition. And this one's a little bit different. This one's focusing on our power supply line, which we're gonna be talking about here later on in the week. But uh, just another thing just to kind of highlight, I like being able to have the vertical mount like the P7 without having the P7 with the additional side panels and everything on there. And then being able to do the vertical GPU mounting is just definitely a plus, folks. So if you guys don't have any other particular questions, I'm gonna have some special guests, but I'll just wait here just a minute. Uh, so that way we can, uh, you know, if you guys have any particular questions on our cases, um, anything prickly pertain to our cases and stuff. I mean, we got our full towers, our mid towers. We got some other solutions that are gonna be coming out here later on in the year. So stay tuned for that before our Computex event that's gonna be in June for information on new products that we have coming out. And definitely, you know, let us know in the feedback. Did you like the View 71 Snow the best? Did you like the View 37 over there the best? You know, let us know what case is your preference here for the show at CES 2018. Now with that, I'm gonna go over here. Now, I, we, we always work with some great modders, uh, oh, oh, globally. I mean, I would say that for all the events that we do, we have just the, the greatest family of modders that we work with, and I really enjoy to be able to work with these people all the time, and being able to bring back some of these guys for a second year in a row, have them come and bring a sick modded case and be able to show what they got and talk a little bit about their stuff. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump right in here to our first chassis that we have, and of course we're gonna be bringing in Mark Molina from Precision Computers to talk about his custom View 71 chassis. Mark. Hey, thanks so much for coming, man. No Again, no another year here at CES 2018, right? Another great year. And you've got an amazing... Now, so this is the View 71, yep. and you've done a little bit of modification here to this guy. Just a little. So yeah, give us a quick little rundown on uh, you know, what you got going on with, uh, you know, with the mod mods and stuff that you've done. The first thing that I did, of course, which is usually with any case I get, is strip it bare. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I painted it with a, an Electron Blue Pearl paint job. Ooh. So that was the first thing I did. The second thing I said to myself is these are all nice tempered glass panels, but I wanted to do something custom. I didn't want to use acrylic because why would I replace glass with acrylic? Right. Right. So I had just got my CNC all set up and I thought, you know, let's use it. Let's do some wood panels. I painted them. They retained the, uh, the wood grain finish on them. Mm. But then I was also able to incorporate the, uh, the Superman, the new from the Man of Steel. Yeah, yeah, From yeah, the yeah. Justice League movie that was just we, released. Let's, do you want to, like, I got to, we got to show them this back part here. Do you mind right. if I just... No, no, go ahead. Let's see if we can just... Can we get a shot in here? Can we swing around a little bit? So we can get this. We'll get the front here, of course. I mean, this is really clean. I like how he did this and incorporated the, the S with the red. I mean, how did you do the this red part and then just to get it it's kind of like a like a not like a blood thing, but I mean, it's it's, it's just really neat how you did the it's the actually effect. A, like a metal based paint, right? Oh, so okay. I, I, pay, I sprayed the whole thing silver first to give it that metal finish on it, mm -hmm. and then I taped this all off so just the S was red, and then I left a little bit, I took the tape off and I did a little fade, so it gets, if you looked at the Man of Steel promo yeah, pictures that they yeah. did, it, it had, had a little bit of that bleed, that little dark texture to it, so I tried to, you know, stay along the, the lines of that to, you know, so it would be relevant to people that were looking at it, to people that were Superman fans, you know, and then the back panel here too, I don't know if we have that in the photo. Yeah, yeah, we'll get that instead in there, we'll get that in here. Any, anything with thumb screws, I have everything attached to the back so that it's all clean. Mm. And then this is just magnetic, so it still latches and opens. Oh, nice. I did uh, a smoked acrylic panel on the inside so that you didn't get a full view of all of this. You just get the nice lighting effect when it's closed. But then when it's open, we see the nice cables and cable management that you would normally see with the glass panel of the View 71. Right, right. And I, I like how you've incorporated this to, uh, you know, I mean, this is some clean cable management, by the way, bro. Good yeah. job, good job. And then this acrylic panel really gives it a nice little effect when you're looking at it from the back. You get that little frosted right. look that you did. It's the frosted, so it hides the inside, but then it still gets the lighting to come through, so it really makes that, that logo jump out, kind of like the fans do on the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. If you want to hold it, hold this yeah, for yeah. a second. Let me get this back over because we want to talk a little bit about that. So, I'm also looking at all my bad on the business cards. Oh, uh, no worry. <laughs> I know you got well, plenty. I'm not worried, yeah. So, yeah, talk a little bit about what you did here. I mean, the, we got uh, some interesting cooling in here I know you want to talk about. We got our ring fans in here and stuff. But, yeah, just talk a little bit about what you got going on. So, I wanted to stay with the whole theme. So, uh, we used some uh, some special thermal take tubing here. That's the, uh, the chromed acrylic. Maybe we'll see some in the future. I don't know. Ooh, it was some prototypes. We'll see, maybe we'll see something like this in the future, guys. Um, I do have the the IRGB plus 1250 watt thermal take power supply that comes with the black individually sleeved PET cables. Mm. So instead of just throwing those away and 
having somebody, you know, pay somebody or spending millions of hours sleeving a whole new set. Oh. All I did was I took a, co a few and replaced a few cables just to give an accent to them. So I have a stripe in the 24 pin. I have a stripe up here in the 8 pin that you can't see, the EPS cable. Mm. And then in the graphics cards here. So it only cost me a few dollars to make what looks like a full custom set of cables because of the really nice black individually sleeved cables. So I was able to utilize that that's already provided by Thermaltake do a slight modification, right? And, and make it look totally custom. And you know, the one thing I want to mention to you, and I know a lot of you guys back at home always think about this, isn't it great to have heat shrinkless yep. sleeved cables? I mean, you guys, who deals with heat shrink on their PSU cables yeah. anymore? I mean, what year is it? Yeah. I mean, this is a great thing to do. And I mean, this is not just the cables that you'd buy as an accessory. This comes right. with the power supply. So I mean, right. you know, for something that's going to be premium that has our plus, our 1250 watt power supply in it, I think it's really, and this is really cool that you did because normally most people will cut a whole new wire, buy the connectors and just yep. the time and the start. This is basically giving you like a heads up yeah. and you get a head start on it and then be able to do something crazy with it. And not even that, like when I pop the cables apart, they didn't fall apart. Yeah. They didn't come apart as I popped them out. They just popped out. So I could take those cables and I could put them back in, or I could reuse them to make a different cable yeah, if I, I needed assuming, to. Yeah. They're, so they're a good quality for being a, you know, a cable that comes with a premium power supply. It's not something you got to scrap and do something completely different to have a custom set of cables done. Right. So you know, to go along with that, Zotac helped out with the graphics cards. We got the mm -hmm. EVGA FTW uh, X299 board. Team group on the RAM that's kind of doing its own little thing. The Ring Plus fans just to top it all off. And then of course this is the UF UF full cryo chills uh, fluid which is pretty much compatible with any radiator so copper aluminum any system you're going to use it in it's going to work with it and then just you know the chrome it's man of steel i wanted to do not just acrylic tubing you know i wanted to stick with that theme do something different the wood silver to go along with that you know so just to tie it all together and, and you know, I just want to kind of jump in here and say something like it was what Mark was talking about with the tubing. So this this tubing that's in here is actually a new upcoming thermal take product. You know, we pass this stuff to the professionals, folks. We want them to get hands on with it first and get the feedback from them before we release that product. So something like this, when you're looking at this, this is not metal. No. You look at that, that is a PETG tube that looks chrome. And it's a perfect fit for this Man of Steel mod from Mark Molina from Precision Computing. So Mark, definitely thank you so much for coming out. Always great to have you, my friend, and thanks, thanks for the awesome mod. It. Always, always. Thanks, hey, hey, all right, guys, so we got one mod down. We got the next one all the way from down under, Mr. Stuart Tonks with his core P90 mod. Now, this thing is just gorgeous, man. Thank you. I mean, and we, we had a little bit of a rough road getting it oh, over yeah. here, oh, yeah. but, you know, in the proper modding spirit, we got this thing, to, and it just it looks badass. Stuart. So, hey, you want to talk a little bit about your P90? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, you may have seen some photos of this when it rocked up. It was a mess. It was like, how many pieces was it? 15, 20 pieces. It was, it was, unfortunately, it was a couple of pieces, yeah. yeah radiators hanging off. Uh, the system was drained, but still coolant went everywhere. It was a mess. So spent a few hours in the hotel room. Luckily, I knew about it beforehand, so I could prepare and bring some parts with me. Mm. Uh, so yeah, spent a few hours and just pretty much had to redesign this whole side here, redesign the acrylic backing and all the sides here and give it an all good clean and do some more tubing work to get it where it is now. But um, overall, I think it did come up pretty good. The only thing is in the final uh, version I did have, I did have a curved panel on the front. Yeah, the front. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sadly, he did have this wicked curved one-piece panel that was on here, but unfortunately it didn't survive uh, the trip all the way over here. And, yeah, and I couldn't put another bit in my luggage because it didn't fit. So, yeah. technically this was the same size as the curved one, but mm -hmm. in one full bit, does not fit in my luggage. So I just had to, had to do two halves and I could just fit them stacked on top, top of each other in my luggage. Yeah, so I mean, if you guys want to take a look at the, the finished build before it had its unfortunate thing, I mean, you can definitely check out uh, ggf.com and get there, you know, and see what it actually looked like there. He has a nice, clean video of it. It's just amazing to see it put together. Now, talk about why'd you do four 120 rats? Um, I don't know, really. Um, I kind of thought of ideas. How can I do something a little bit different? How to sort of show off this case as in a different way of showcasing hardware? Because, of course, I had great sponsors from uh, not just you guys, but also Zotac, ASRock, uh, G School and um, and whatnot. I wanted to do the hardware a little bit different where you can see it on display. So you've got the motherboard, well the motherboard's in a stock location and then I've got the video card sort of down below and that's actually where the power supply goes down below. So yeah, uh, let's, let, can you get in over here? I want to show this to everybody because I know a couple people are
were asking, you know, they wanted to see a little bit closer. Look at what he did here with the graphics card. Now, normally on the stock case is where the power supply goes, but Stuart's gone ahead and modified this. He paneled the part, but then he's got the graphic card mounted vertically here. And I mean, it's just amazing to be able to drop this down. And then he's got his tubing going back through into the case. Everything's going on all back here, and you got a nice clean front. And of course, you can see these clean 90 degree bend tubes for his four 120 radiators that he has. And then, of course, and this is all just, I mean, there's a lot of magic going on back here. Um, and then with that, I mean, you guys are probably like, where's his pump at? Where's his pump at? So on the back side of the case, there's actually two pumps that he has mounted back there. So you talk a little bit about like figuring out how to put like everything together. Uh, yeah, so it wasn't really easy at first. Uh, my main issue was the power supply. Luckily, yeah. you guys do an SFX. Uh, 600 watt was probably uh, sort of borderline. Maybe, maybe borderline, but you know, powering an X uh, an i9 system with a uh, 1080 Ti. Mind you, this is a Zotac uh, 1080 Ti Mini. So Zotac have just released this card. Awesome little card, and it comes with the Ar Arctic Storm water block on it, and Ooh. it's got the built-in RGB. So nice little card there. And it actually fits this uh, fits this build perfectly because if I did use a full-length card, it would have actually extended uh, out into sort of the rest yeah, of the Yeah, I mean, it, it's really Really close to even with the post right there. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's a perfect fit. Yeah, it was a perfect, perfect fit. Perfect fit. So yeah, pretty much uh, once I worked out the power supply would fit in, mm. I just pretty much uh, ran all the pass-throughs through, uh, drew it all out, and then the rest of the inside of the system is just tubed up with just flexi tubing, and then it just runs through the series on the two separate loops, pretty much A to B, and then goes on from there. Uh, some of the other hardware, if you're wondering, in this build, I've got the Azrock uh, X299 Tai Chi. And this is the XE edition, so that's the extreme edition. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So um, ASRock have released new revisions of their early i9 boards. So in all, all their latest i9 boards, so they have the XE version, which is the extreme. So they basically basically just beefed up the power delivery to two EPS 8 pins and also added extra cooling. So sweet boards coming out of ASRock. And um, the CPU is the 7900X 10-core, which is running sweet in this system. Like you've pretty much... 7900X, folks. <laughs> 10 cores. So you basically got, basically got two RADs, two radiators for each uh, each component, pretty much basically the GPU and the CPU. Amazing build, Stuart. I mean, as always, it's a pleasure, Thank pleasure you. and an honor to have you out here. Great build. I'm so glad we got this thing back together. That's what it's all about, folks. I mean, you know, sometimes there's bumps in the road and you can just make, I mean, look at this. It looks like it didn't even, nothing really even happened to it. But great build here for the Core P90. Love what you did with the radiators, my friend. Thanks again so much for coming out. Now, last but not least, we got Mr. Expensive Sunglasses here, Mr. Mike Petersons. Oh, pleasure, Mike. All the way from Belgium, folks, and he brought out his modded View 71. Mikey, tell, tell me about this guy. What do you got going on? So, uh, as you can see, uh, I uh, integrated it, the speakers. So, uh, it's a mobile. Well, do we, we got some bumps going on in here? Yeah, it's a mobile DJ station. Uh. What? A DJ station? What? <laughs> <laughs> it has my favorite song on it. <laughs> so yeah, it's a mobile DJ station. On the top we have uh, the Hercules uh, mobile. Uh, oh yeah, we'll have to show the, We'll have to show this a little bit because it's up on top. He's actually got a lot of crazy things in here, folks. Yeah. Uh -huh. So this uh, this mod is uh, based on the Overwatch uh, game. The Wizard D Entertainment. The DJ L DJ Lucio uh, character. And, uh, so and I was yeah. going to say, you just, you entered, this was in a contest, right? And yeah, yeah. As you can see here, folks, it was uh, made, it was looks made, like he got, he did a pretty good job. Yeah. It was made for the LDLC modding trophy uh, at the Paris Games Week. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, we had to choose a character for uh, Overwatch, and I choose uh, definitely DJ Lucio because I like to DJ behind my uh, free time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what do we got? So we got, uh, we, you redid all the paneling on here. Yeah. I definitely see your traditional style of, uh, like, a, you know, your, your your 3D laser and, and laser cutting or 3D printing, your staple of what you normally do. It's yeah. great to see all this. Yeah. I like the, the panels that you did here, yeah. which is kind of mount us. Even the water block, you even added a little, oh yeah. We, but let's look at this, the way this glass is and everything. It's really cool how this is just fluorescent like crazy with the lighting on it yeah. and stuff. And then we got speakers here on the side and then he's got the proper pass-throughs for that. And then let's come, if we can, do we got room to squeeze around the corner here? Can we squeeze around the corner? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Do so you want to get in there and get a good picture? If you guys have any questions on this one, I mean, this is a cool build. Another View 71 from Thermal Take. Uh, Mike did an amazing job with this. The, the pass-throughs, the paneling, the 3D printing, 
Uh, I mean, it's just, it's really cool. And just incorporating an actual DJ system yeah, into it on top of a computer. Yeah, it's so cool. I mean, it's just, pretty, it's just pretty crazy. Do we have some cable room? Let's see, do we got enough? Or are we, that's about it. Can we get over there? All right, well, let's see if we can turn this. If Mike doesn't mind, I won't break it, Mike, I promise. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. There we go, there we go. So and you can even see he even 3D printed the power button on here, but this is really cool, Mike. I mean, this is really neat to just add on to have something like that on the top. You've got some, you, yeah, and you, you also have your little speaker. 3D, 3D printed headset. <laughs> so it shoots out the, the sound waves. <laughs> yeah. But very cool, very cool. A lot of details with this. I, I, I like how it all came out. And uh, just, I mean, being able to see like a stereo in a computer is just, yeah, it's like, it's, it's that's like, what modding's all like, about. It's like a boom box in, like, uh, from, <laughs> from in the 80s, you know? Right? Yeah, right, yeah. taking it back, dude. Oh, yeah. and you got the good choice of music, too, there for you yeah, as well, man. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. on, Mike. All hey, right. so thanks so much for coming out. As a pleasure, as always. Yeah, good always. to see you again, man, you too, and everything. So um, I got a couple of people asked a couple of questions. So I want to kind of loop back over here. I know somebody was asking about uh, the View 37. So I wanted to kind of come back over and just get a little bit uh, more on that because I saw that question. So I'll try to help you guys out with that. If you guys have any other particular questions for chassis from Thermal Take today, uh, just let me know and I'll be glad to give you guys some additional info. But uh, I did see somebody ask a question, so I definitely want to try to help them out with that. And of course with that we have, this is the View 37. So you guys just want to kind of zoom in, kind of get a look at the wide body style with the case. Um, as you can see here, you get that open look. This is a one piece acrylic panel that has a 90 degree bend in it that goes up over the top, giving it a unique look. Definitely a unique look that you would see. And uh, you know, vertical GPU mounting. And uh, yeah, just get in there so you can get a nice clean shot of that. I mean. One of the cases I was pretty excited to show you guys is this. And again, it's a wide body, extra filtration. We've gone and made sure that we have proper thermal cooling performance in this case and be able to fill it packed up with lots of products as you can see. And I know you guys are probably all wondering what's going on with the fans. You guys are probably all wondering why is they all doing that? How's everything all matching? So that's going to be what we're going to start off with tomorrow for day two here at CES 2018. And that's going to be talking about our cooler products. We have new RGB stuff. We have new lighting effects. We have synchronization stuff. We have AI control. There is a ton to talk about tomorrow. So if you guys are going to be around, we're going to be here. Same TT channel, same TT time for CES throughout the week, today, tomorrow, and Thursday, covering CES 2018 here for Thermal Take. So again, you guys, this is day one. A lot of new chassis, more information along the way. Specification, you guys have any questions, drop me a line, drop something here in the chat, and we'll be glad to help you guys out with that. So uh, with that, I'm looking here, boom, boom. Time tomorrow, so time tomorrow is about 12 o'clock noon Pacific Standard Time. So we're gonna try to keep the same time throughout the week, basically like how we started out today. So it makes it real easy for everybody to kind of tune in. And then of course with that, if you guys uh, don't catch the live stream, we'll have the recordings back up so you guys can watch it when it's convenient for you. So you can see some of the new stuff that's coming out here for Thermal Take. So that's it guys for day one. Again, I'm Thermal Mike here with Thermal Take. And, uh, you know, you guys have a great week here at CES, and we'll see you tomorrow.